and we extend them into the solution so that and we generate biogas or make the hydrogen fuel and make it clean for running into the power cell equipment or a fuel cell or to be stored or to be dispensed from a from a dispenser. Climate change is a reality and it is happening as we speak. Good part is that there is a lot of awareness about that today through these summits and another good part is that hydrogen is not something which is very new. It is something which has existed in the industry for a long time. What happens when you increase the production of renewable energy that often there comes a gap between the supply and the demand. These gaps are because when the supply is there, the demand might not be there and when the demand is there, the supply might not be there. So these gaps are actually inefficiencies. And inefficiency is something which we don't want. We want efficiency in in whatever process we make. It be a company process, be it energy process, be it making power, and especially a uh, process where uh, we are dealing with hydrogen which is uh, not as cost effective as other sources that are available today, we need to be very efficient. So yes, hydrogen is one of the potential solutions to store this renewable energy in the form of hydrogen itself, uh, ammonia as well, green methanol, I am not going to comment on the cost, of course these all things will come at a premium, uh, but uh, that is something which is going to be my focus of attention that even if it is at a premium, uh, we need to put our efforts to make sure uh, that we are doing it in a way that it is sustainable, which is the topic of the session today, to navigate hydrogen ecosystems for a sustainable approach. Uh, because we can't also just endlessly spend money and not create a system which is not sustainable for sale the next century or two centuries or so. So once this hydrogen is made and it's stored, we need to use it. Uh, if you see the first graph at the top, it, is, it shows that how a gas behaves when it is mixed with hydrogen, the methane number reduces. Methane number is nothing but uh, it represents the knocking resistance of any fuel when it is put in an, in an engine. And knocking resistance is something which is required for a longer life, for a higher output and for reduced emissions which is very very important. In this transition fossil fuels will play a role to complement the hydrogen uh, ecosystem so that we give time for this hydrogen ecosystem to scale and reduce in cost and uh, give us a feasible feasible alternative. On the, in the graph at the bottom you can see the heat value basically which is nothing but the energy energy content. So when you increase the mixing of hydrogen with the natural gas, uh, the heat content basically goes down, the energy content goes down, which in simple word, it means that to make the same amount of power, we'll have to put more of hydrogen than the amount of natural gas we're putting in, putting in, the, in the engine. And hydrogen being more expensive, uh, it, does not make for too much of a feasible uh, solution when you move to the most efficient way of making power from hydrogen which is fuel cell uh, it is even costlier so this situation needs to be addressed which I already mentioned before that this transition phase uh, from 0% hydrogen to 100% hydrogen to maintain sustainability will have to see contribution coming from the traditional ways of mixing with fossil fuel in nice engine, whether to make power or whether to drive uh, a bus, it will play, it has to play a role uh, until the investments that are being made allow the hydrogen ecosystem to scale enough so that the cost of the equipments as well as uh, the fuel uh, comes down. Very important topic which has not been mentioned so far but I will I would like to bring it to light is the core resource that is apart from electricity which is in uh, requiring electrolysis is water and these snapshots from UNESCO, a few stats that I picked from UNESCO um, 
water is a global crisis in many many countries. Almost 26 percent of the world population does not have access to clean drinking water. And what our experience tells, you know, with the executing a project with the SOEC electrolyzer, the amount of water, the, the quality of water which is required to be put in that electro electrolyzer is thousand times more pure than what is recommended as clean drinking water. That purification is also a cost. That purification is a huge cost beyond the cost of expensive fuel cell or the electrolyzer or storage. And this cost needs to be reduced. This cost needs to be tracked. So there's a need for improved R&D on compatibility of electrolyzers and fuel cell, uh, electrolyzers basically of course to be used with more conservative quality of water more inferior quality of water say I was uh, I had a chance to speak with three gentlemen uh, who are into the space uh, in India only and I was happy to hear that they are working on technology which makes hydrogen uh, directly from seawater without any desalination, without any purification. But of course, that is, oh, I was, uh, there was only one person who I spoke to, but this is a rather big topic which needs some address addressing. Because this quality of hydrogen is required to maintain the life of the electrolyzer, which today some people say 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, and that is also something which we need. We need the life, it is not a cheap equipment, we need it to run for 20, 25 years in order to. Uh, make it sustainable. Regeneration of water via fuel cell is uh, does come handy. It, it generates, regenerates water, and that water can be circulated to electrolyzers to make uh, to make uh, hydrogen. But does it compensate enough? Is a question that you know we we need to answer. So this topic of water is uh, something which needs. Addressing as well, apart from just the cost of hydrogen or the equipments. So, hydrogen is definitely one of the ways to go for a sustainable future, but deliberations need to happen uh, on how to make it happen effectively. And just for people who are interested, the picture on the right is actually the picture of the stack that we are using. This is the SOE stack which we are using in our project in uh, Great Rwanda. Once it is completed, we would be happy to host everyone. everyone just to see the to see the site. This is going to be the first first project which is going to happen in India. Thanks a lot for being patient and thanks for your time.